You guys presented what were some of the first real controlled clinical trial data in a drug for COVID-19, and it was kind of a mixed result. Help us understand how we should think about the prospects for Kevzara uh, for helping these very sick patients. Well, before I answer your question on Kevzara and COVID, in a different world, in a different time, uh, we had some other huge news today. You know, at Regeneron here, we're focused on uh, trying to help people suffering from all serious diseases. And we have to remember, lung cancer is still the number one cancer killer in America. We just announced today that uh, uh, our cancer study in lung cancer was stopped early because of overwhelming efficacy. Um, in the field of immuno-oncology, this has been a very challenging cancer. There's only one FDA-approved agent uh, in this class, monotherapy and first-line lung cancer. So these are really important results. We have to remember that worldwide, almost 2 million people die a year of lung cancer, about 200,000 in America alone. So this is really important advance for patients and for physicians who are treating them. I understand the focus on coronavirus. Uh, we have that as well, so I want to get to that as well. So, yeah, we released uh, some of the first um, results coming from large and well-controlled studies. Um, I think that the results are um, very cautious at this point. What we showed was that in one population where small uncontrolled studies and even controlled studies but of small size had suggested great promise, in the so-called severe patients, those who are hospitalized and requiring oxygen but not on ventilators, there did not appear to be a benefit for those patients. There was a potential benefit for the more critical patients, those that are hospitalized and on ventilators. Um, the Independent Data Monitoring Committee uh, recommended that we stop exploring the severe population because apparently the lack of benefit uh, but suggested we continue to explore the potential benefit in the critical population. But I think it shows uh, why we as a community, even in these desperate times, we can't just be using drugs, uh, trying to repurpose drugs um, uh, for new purposes and counting on small, even controlled studies. We need to be doing the large, well-controlled phase three type studies that, that are, are really the standard in the industry uh, and that the FDA demands of us. And if we don't do that, um, unfortunately, I think there's going to be a lot of false hope and a lot of people being treated with uh, medications that may not help them at all and might even hurt them. And it's important to note also that this drug is completely separate from a new development program that Regeneron's working on for a new drug for COVID-19. Tell us about the progress uh, in, in that area and when you plan to start human clinical trials. Yeah, thanks. That's a great question, Meg. So as I said, the Kivzara is a repurposed drug, an existing drug approved for rheumatoid arthritis that small studies from China first and other places suggested might be useful uh, for coronavirus. The history of repurposing existing drugs is not really a very fruitful one. Uh, what has historically worked better for us and for the industry is making specifically designed targeted drugs against the disease agent of interest, in this case, the coronavirus itself. So using the same tried and true approach that we applied for other programs, most notably Ebola, where we produced a very effective treatment for Ebola in the middle of that epidemic, uh, we used the same technologies and the same approaches to make highly targeted antiviral antibodies, they're called. It's the um, it's the agent that vaccines try to generate in the body. We can make them outside of the body and give them back to people so you don't need to be vaccinated. Um, we've reported that the progress on that front has been uh, astoundingly impressive. Uh, we set the record for Ebola in terms of going from starting the program to clinical trials in nine months. Uh, for the coronavirus program, we're going to break that. We're going to be in clinical trials by June, which will be five months. Uh, with this very specific targeted approach against the virus. I think there's a lot of reason to have hope for that and more confidence in that targeted approach than the repurposed drug approach. Hi, this is Morgan Brennan. I um, can't wait to see how all of that plays out. Uh, it, it sounds absolutely fascinating. I want to take a step back, though, and just ask you what is probably a very rudimentary question, but when it comes to some of these trials, how do you decide who actually gets the treatment and who gets the placebo. I, I get that it's so important to have a control group 
in these trials. But I would imagine at a time like this, it's even tougher than usual to make those decisions. Yeah. Well, first of all, we worked in partnership with the FDA, with BARDA, the rapid response arm of the Department of Health and Human Services. We worked with New York State, with the governor's office. And what we have to recognize is that if you don't do controlled studies, if you just count on these uncontrolled studies, you get misleading information. That was, I think, the case maybe with this class of drugs. People thought it might be a panacea. They were saying, oh, look how well these patients are doing. They didn't realize that these classes of patients actually will do really well even without a drug. So that's why we need controlled studies. But in our study, we actually gave drug to four patients for every one placebo patient. So the majority of the patients are getting the drug. And the other patients are getting the best known standard of care at this moment in time. They were eligible, they could have gotten any of the other repurposed drugs that are around now. But we don't have evidence that any of them work. That's why we need these studies. Without these sorts of studies, we could be offering hope that's the equivalent of snake oil to the very desperate people. This is why everybody came together with us. The FDA worked nonstop 24-7. BARDA, the governor and the New York State Health Commissioner, Howard Zucker, all the great New York medical institutions first and then all the other medical institutions throughout the country, they said, we need real answers. We can't just rely on these anecdotal small studies, whether they're small controlled studies or not. We need to have big, large data sets to convince us that these drugs really can make a benefit. And what is that benefit exactly? And so that's why we work so hard to get this sort of sort of data.